Good. And you can start right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new session. I'm going to talk about navigating the pitfalls. These are mostly common mistakes I found uh, during Matomo implementations. So we are going to navigate through some of those pitfalls and uh, how to solve them. <clears throat> I'm Jaime Alfonso Aponte. I'm psychologist specialized in consumer behavior, technical data analyst, um, I love uh, data-driven marketing. I consider myself uh, uh, an open source enthusiast, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here sharing with you my time and my knowledge in Matomo. As you can see in the icons uh, below my name, I love camping, I love bonsai trees, and obviously a good beer in a good company. Regarding my experience, uh, I've been working for the private and the public sectors in, in both Europe and the Americas. I'm a trainer. I've been holding training sessions with the, in both the public and the, and the private sector uh, regarding uh, data analyst, uh, Matomo, uh, and consumer behavior. Is, uh, analyst. Uh, I am really interested in, in, in artificial intelligence, uh, conver uh, conversion rate optimization, and data visualization. I've been working mostly with, with Power BI, Tableau, and BigQuery. <clears throat> so let's uh, dive in into the implementation challenges. One of the, the main problems or, or, or challenges we have as, as, uh, as analytics consultants is the, the time pressure. You need to do it fast and do it well. And that put us in, 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 a, in, in a big problem when you are trying to deliver a good um, uh, analytics, when you are trying to deliver a good product and uh, because of that, we face some uh, big challenges, especially when we use when we when we try to implement in new technologies. When I'm going to go through this uh, template uh, that you can see, uh, we're going to talk about the single page applications, the cookie compliance, event hierarchies a little bit about naming conventions and log and reports. Regarding single page applications, the effort, as you can see in the, in the image, is quite uh, um, uh, 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 demands a, a good knowledge about Matomo Tag Manager, JavaScript and uh, data layer. And uh, for that reason, uh, the, the effort could be significantly uh, high. The cost, because uh, you need a specialized knowledge, uh, often you need a, a, a senior implementer, so it could, could be high, but uh, obviously a senior implementer can achieve the implementation in a shorter time uh, with the correct tools, uh, for example, data layer or data attributes. The implications of a bad implementation uh, in single page applications as in other tools as well, is a bad measurement and, um, and uh, a bad measurement plus a high cost of implementation leads to waste and inaccurate insights. Regarding cookie compliance, um, the effort is not that difficult. So if you need, uh, if you know the, the Matomo way uh, and uh, you are using a, a good compliance management tool, uh, 
the, the solution could be more or less complicated. Some of those tools like um, OneTrust or CookieEyes or CookieBot, uh, CookieYes, I mean, or CookieBot are um, most or less difficult. And depending of, of your interest uh, or the places you are, uh, you have your customers. If you are working in the Europe region, obviously you need to be aware about the, the compliance in Europe and even though uh, inside France or Germany you need to be complying with uh, another uh, uh, regulations on the in, on those places so um, uh, if you need a, a knowledgeable uh, person to implement this cookie compliance but it's not that difficult at all and uh, regarding the cost, it's not that it's relatively low. Uh, the cost of implementation uh, is not that high, depending on the, the, the solutions you are using. But regarding the implications of a bad implementation could lead to astronomical fin uh, fines. Um, in event hierarchies, uh, the the challenge is that you need to 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 you need a quite significant. It's quite uh, time consuming. Why? Because you need uh, to be aware uh, about your stakeholders. There are many stakeholders, and you need uh, to gather the the points of views of, of these uh, stakeholders. So it's time consuming. And uh, the cost, because you need to involve many stakeholders uh, and this time uh, uh, just a small change can lead to, can lead to bad reports and inaccurate uh, measurements. The implications could be high if you don't have a consistent hierarchy of events. And it leads to poor insights and uh, fragmented reporting that needs to be cleaned, uh, cleaned up later, and that's uh, not desirable. Regarding the naming convention, well, it, it, here it is not that high, but it needs to be managed wisely and uh, well documented at the moment of the implementation. So it's relatively at low cost, uh, and the implications are mostly for future challenges. Uh, for example, when you when you change, when you make changes, when you are trying to debug uh, the, the setup, uh, so that uh, plays a big role the, uh, to have a good naming convention to identify the triggers or the tags that are be, that has been fired. Um, Regarding logs and uh, and reports, uh, it needs to be addressed during the measurement plan. Why? Because in this uh, in this planning, uh, uh, you you need to plan what to be to be uh, gathered, what what how your reports should looks like, uh, and obviously taking into account the stakeholders, you need to deliver uh, plans, uh, uh, um, uh, reports that uh, make uh, 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 important, uh, that, that make uh, sense for them. And uh, it creates, with a bad reporting and a bad, bad um, uh, logs, it creates disinterest in, in the tool and distrust in the reports, and therefore uh, an investment of uh, time and money that will lead to implementation of other tools and greater expenses for our clients. So that's really important for us to, to, keep, to keep in mind both the stakeholders, their target uh, groups, and a, a good uh, report structure and a, a event hierarchy. So let's say, Take a look to single pace application uh, uh, and uh, some uh, bad examples. 
as you can see, uh, this is one of, of, of the, the um, examples I wanted to really talk about because uh, this kind of reg regex implementation is not desirable. The implication uh, of this kind of uh, reg regex implementation is that you are, as, as soon as you are using mobile, uh, visitors, you are losing those uh, uh, visitors in your reports, and any single change in in the look and feel of the uh, of the uh, the buttons or the class uh, uh, will uh, lose the trigger, and obviously you are losing information, uh, and this. Uh, implementation this trigger will be lose will lose the the importance and uh, the maintenance of this kind of uh, uh, implementations is quite high because it's difficult to identify where is the change and you know and um, the performance regarding the performance at the loading time in the pages uh, could be quite significant uh, significantly when you have um, when you have uh, a lot of this kind of uh, implementations. And the flexibility, obviously, is, is really, really, really difficult to, to, to get in shape. So one of the best practices alternatives is to consider using data attributes for tracking for, for these tracking proposals, if this is possible. For example, you can add data tracking the equals true as you can see in the in the example, um, uh, as an attribute uh, to the elements, and it will provide more robust and maintainable solution. And uh, regarding regex, uh, try to use less specific regular expressions combined with additional logic uh, in the script uh, to identify the, the elements. For example, you can match a more general pattern and then use a JavaScript to further filter the matched elements based on the uh, on additional criteria. This is another example, uh, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see. Let me zoom in, but uh, depending on the on, on the order you choose the the check boxes here it will be gathered in a different way in a different order barnes in this in this example you see the order change and at the moment of the uh, to analyze this this kind of uh, information uh, is is going to be impossible because the variations are huge. You see the the amount of different check boxes, so it leads to to inac uh, inaccurate statics, statistics, and you need to process the data to be analyzed uh, furtherly. One of the my suggestions or good practices alternative is to 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 track them as you can see in the lower side of the of the uh, slide, uh, implementing a JavaScript function variable that could fetch every single element uh, individually. And uh, so th that's, that's uh, advisable. Now let's jump into the cookie consent and GDPR uh, because here we made a, 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 an interesting study, but let's talk about the 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 GDPR because GDPR put us in, a, in big challenges in the analytics and marketing ecosystems. Uh, first of all, how to implement correctly? That's uh, that's a big question, and how to interpret the law at the moment to make an implementation? That's some of the questions that uh, our customers are struggling with. And uh, some companies uh, refuse to get rid of bad, of bad practices. And uh, probably because the, the analytics tools force us to adapt ourselves to the tools and not the opposite way. 
that makes it difficult. And the granularity of the data make it difficult to for an experienced implementator uh, to to do it correctly and to do it right. And on the other hand, the customer ha has the the last word. And at the end, you just do what they what you are getting paid for, and uh, that's uh, that's sad. Uh, but that's the that's the, the 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 situation we are facing now. So we took the time to go through different uh, to to. We went through different municipalities and make an, an exploratory study around the municipalities in Sweden, and we found the, these results. But this it's important to to take into account that this is not a random sample, first of all, and obviously this is not a conclusive data uh, on the current state of compliance with data protection laws in in, in the country. But we took a sample of 118 municipalities. We used this tool, the European Data Protection Board tool, which is quite good. Um, as I'm saying, it, this is not a random sample and the, the, the numbers here are not uh, conclusive, but we found that 92% uh, of, the, of the municipalities doesn't comply with the GDPR uh, uh, regulations. Only 22% of the of the municipalities were compliant, and some of the examples. So some of the, we we found uh, are, uh, for example, that you've been tracked before you consent, as you can see in the, in the le in the upside left. Um, you have the 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 acceptance um, banner, uh, but you are being gated, uh, you are being uh, tracked. Uh, uh, the other example is that um, they place cookies before any consent is given, which is not desirable. Or in other cases, uh, just they inform you that we are using cookies, take it or leave it. <laughs> so that's the kind of attitude you can uh, conclude from this kind of uh, of um, uh, setup. Uh, this is uh, some of the. These are the the results. Uh, 20 20 percent uh, of the municipalities tracks you before consent. Uh, Seventeen percent uh, or or eighteen percent almost place cookies without consent uh, uh, and no cookie burner. A 14% uh, place cookies without consent and informs you about the use of uh, cookies. Uh, 14, uh, the same amount, uh, place cookies without consent despite the cookie burner. So you deny the cookie burner, they are placing cookies uh, uh, after all. Only 8% uh, doesn't track you. 6% tracks cookie-less if you refuse cookies, which is, uh, I think is unacceptable. You refuse cookies, you don't, you don't need to get cookies at all. 6% uh, or 7% almost uh, has a good cookie hand, uh, handling. 4.2% uh, tracks uh, cookie-less. And uh, a, a, a lower amounts uh, use uh, informative cookie banner implementation errors, and and uh, only one percent you find that you can't revoke the consent. But um, oh, as I'm saying, these are not conclusive data. But uh, it's interesting to 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 take a look to it. Let's talk about the the other problem I found is that some because many content management systems uh, provides the possibility to bake the the track the the pixel codes uh, they believe this is the correct way to implement pixels on your uh, sites 
And uh, we have to keep in mind uh, and advise our customers about the correct way to implement this kind of pixels. Every single pixel has to be uh, uh, fired, uh, triggered by Matomo or the, the, the analytics tools you are using. So keep in mind that uh, don't forget to, to, to fire your scripts using Matomo Tag Manager. And uh, uh, this is really important at the moment of the cookie compliance uh, implementation because some of the people doesn't know the flow uh, uh, about the compliance, the, how Matomo, the Matomo way, simple as that. This is just a, a one part of the of the implementation of the cookie consent in Matomo. We are not showing the required cookie consent part, but it's important to understand how the Matomo way. It yes, that as that. And uh, now let's jump into the event hierarchies uh, to keep the line in, in your reports. And uh, let's take a look to, to this, uh, to this um, implementation, uh, this report, uh, event report. As you can see on the, on the right side uh, is, uh, 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 oh, sorry. Mm. Uh, this report uh, is probably aimed to UX, des uh, UX designers or ID specialists uh, or developers, but you are losing uh, other members of the of, uh, or end users in in the platform. We have to keep in mind that uh, who are our stakeholders again. We are losing the information, how this information is going to be interpreted by the digital marketers or content man uh, marketers or for C-level executives or for legal uh, teams or sales teams. This is not, this is not, not, not this is um, difficult to, to be interpreted for this kind of uh, 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 colleagues. So, um, Mm, keep uh, update your your um, your um, tags and your triggers and the re the event uh, categories because uh, uh, you are losing the main point of an, an, an analytics tool. Matomo is shipped with a, a, a high flexibility, so have this into account at the moment uh, you implement. Uh, remember who are your stakeholders. Let's take a look to uh, the language granularity. This is uh, the, uh, an, a good example of overuse of click text uh, uh, events. Um, as you can see, um, we have, uh, this, is, this is from a, a menu, an example from a menu where you which is being clicked by different kind of populations and you get splitted results in your reports. So, uh, and this is not desirable at the moment to analyze the data. So, uh, um, you need to, to be consist, uh, consistent at the moment to, to show the data uh, in your reports. And uh, one, uh, suggestion to, to solve this problem could be using data attributions, as you can see in the right side. Uh, but if you have no access to the, to the source code, you can create a custom JavaScript variable in Matomo, um, in Matomo Tag Manager that results, that, that returns an standardized ID for each menu item based on, on the position of or, or the name, then uh, you can track the user language. Use a variable that captures the user language setting on your on your website 
This could be retrieved from the cookie, from a cookie, from a meta tag, or directly from the URL if it contains the language parameter. You can configure uh, then the event tracking tag in your in your tag uh, configuration. As you can see in the left side, set the event category uh, with the, the menu identifier and uh, the user language identifier as well. So that that could help you to, to get rid of these kind of uh, reports in your events. Then regarded, regard, regarding uh, marketing campaigns reporting, it's really, really, really important to keep a, a good a hierarchy in your parameters. This is a good example about how to uh, gather the information uh, using your UTM or MTM parameters, um, whatever you use. The source for this uh, this um, uh, hierarchy is in in the in the screen, uh, and this is one of the most common errors I found in marketing reporting campaigns. So please be aware about it because uh, a bad report leads to bad and mistrust of the data. So keep keep in mind this. Let's talk about logs and reports. This is another uh, common example. The video in the website generates, generates large volumes of, of uh, uh, analytics uh, data, which can clutter the reports and make it difficult to, to see meaningful uh, insights. This is a common using uh, issue where, when, when when media elements like video are on, on autoplay and have extensive interactions that get tracked. So uh, uh, no, not all the media analytics are meaningful for us. Set up event tracking rules uh, to only capture the significant in, in interactions. Instead of tracking every second, uh, consider tracking every significant milestone. For example, if you know that the, your, your video shows the most important mes message, um, uh, so just track the every 10%, uh, for example. So this spams your analytics. So, so just take the, the, the media analytics that, it, that, uh, that is meaningful for your stakeholders. Let's take a look to uh, more, mm, uh, to another problem that I, be, I, I, I found using Matomo together with Google Ads. This is uh, for, the, for marketing people, they probably understand what I'm talking about, but here the key point is that you are gathering uh, um, the G click, uh, Google Click ID, G, G click ID. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but okay. <laughs> uh, this is the the, the problem. Uh, let me zoom into the. Uh, you see the campaign names here, the products, the campaign medium, and the and the campaign source uh, that is being tracked uh, correctly. And the the big problem is that when you use auto tagging, it adds a question mark in this way. Let me see. It adds an, a question mark on. Uh, before the G click ID uh, in, uh, by this form. And because it has already a question mark here in the beginning of the of the UTM parameters, you get two eyes, uh, two, two, two question marks, which gives you a campaign name that is quite misleading, as you can see. It's been gathered in, in a wrong way. Uh, in this other example, we are not using uh, uh, G, G, G lead or G click ID. Uh, 
Uh, so you are gathering right information, but not using the, 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 the ID, the click ID. And in this one, you are gathering only the click, click ID, but not the UTM tax. So that's not desirable for Matomo uh, conversions or Matomo uh, campaign tracking analysts. So the, there is more information in Google uh, regarding uh, the use of this uh, click ID. Um, um, yeah, let's uh, talk about uh, uh, to keep clean reports using parameters. So you, we need to to avoid using unnecessary, unnecessary parameters. In this example, we are gathering uh, uh, sessions uh, expired and sessions uh, um, information. So you get use the, the excluded parameters to, to get rid of this kind of reports because it's just noise. It's, it's not uh, useful for, okay, if you are a developer, it probably is meaningful for you, but not for your stakeholders. Most of the, your stakeholders uh, are not going to analyze this kind of data. So keep the separate reports or keep uh, filters uh, to, to, to get clean your reports. Uh, save as an advice, save almost uh, two hours in your tracking plan to set up this kind of filters. It will deliver cleaned reports and a better use of the resources as well as the understanding of your analytics. Well, that's all from my side. Uh, some questions, uh, please go ahead. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Alfonso, for your um, for your conference. Um, I'm looking in the chat if we have any any questions. Uh, so no question, uh, no questions yet. Um, so maybe I'm gonna do exactly like for Thomas, uh, trying to cook uh, okay. you uh, a little bit uh, in order to let's say lens probably the next uh, 15 minutes so that we can finish at around 11:45. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna take let's say my more my hat that I have at Matomo as a customer experience manager and customer success manager because your conference is a lot about uh psychological aspect and i would like to know more uh from your perspective what would be let's say um the tops the top three main psychological barrier that the end user coming from google analytics is facing when they are looking at matomo so here i'm more talking about your personal feelings and personal guts mm -hmm. but more about what you are seeing on the field with the specific persona that have been forced, let's say, to switch from Google Analytics to, to Matomo, either Universal Analytics or, or GA, uh, GA3. But let, let's imagine that's our ideal persona here. What, what are you seeing uh, on your side or any other personas? But that's the one I have in mind. What are the top three main psychological barriers that they are facing when looking at Matomo for the first time? Mm, that's a really good question. Uh, most uh, one of the psychological studies, uh, uh, when you is, is is could be applied to to this uh, topic you are taking up, um, uh, and that's the the way we gather uh, food, and. Uh, um, uh, when you go to a new uh, supermarket and you are trying to find a, a simple uh, toothpaste or something, you get you go around and around until you find the the, the, the toothpaste. And uh, this is almost the same uh, problem when you when you uh, have a, a new platform. Uh, the platforms, uh, as I'm saying uh, in a, in a, in one of the my slices, that, that uh, is that uh, you you 
you get lost. Uh, you, you, you don't know where to find the information and you need to adapt yourself to the tool uh, uh, in terms to deliver a good uh, product, a, a good um, implementation. Uh, and and the, the problem in, in, in the beginning wasn't that high na like now when Google is trying to make a big change in, in, in GA4, uh, trying to rename some well-known terms in the analytics uh, environment, uh, trying to rename some, some, uh, some events and topics and, and trying to, to make you to create your own uh, conversions and, uh, you know, so this is one of the main uh, problems. Uh, some of them in the beginning uh, move uh, quite fast to, to, to Matomo. And uh, when we help them, uh, it's always uh, necessary to, to, to offer uh, uh, a course to understand the, the tool and where to find the, 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 the tools they get used to in the other platform. That, that, that's a, a challenge when we are using, uh, when the, we are moving from uh, Google to Matomo. Other challenge is, for example, when you when you try in e-commerce, for example, uh, some some of the tools are not in in the in in the place you get used to. For example, when you let's talk about um, um, abandoned carts. Abandoned carts uh, is to to get abandoned carts, you need to hover the low the the lower side of the of the report uh, to get the, the icon visible for you. This is another challenge. We we need to to think uh, more UX uh, minded uh, uh, because uh, it, it get it, it creates frustration at the moment of of the uh, to use the tool. I don't know if there are some um, some um, uh, UX designers here among the the public, but it will be desirable to to get uh, their inputs in in these topics. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So anyone who who has some design skills, uh, feel free to. Uh, write any messages in the in the chat so if i remember see if i make a kind of a summary the first pain point you will say is kind of what happened in everyday situation like you move to a new place you are you looking for food and in fact i see it more like i'm in a new place so let's say stockholm i don't know it much and in order to feel better i will look at the big franchise out there such as uh mcdonald's such as the big name in order for me to try to identify exactly those same feature within matomo which looks like the one of google analytics because i will feel more comfortable if i find those and i will start to dig from there uh, was i correct yeah that's true uh, I, another thing that i think could be could be desirable is to get like a, a you know this this what is the name uh, this um, when you start a new a new um, a new user that you get uh, around uh, the 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 pop-ups the uh, that shows you where to find this and where to find that you know that that could be a kind of a, a the wizard that navigates through the 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 the, the the tool that could be a, an interesting tool as well uh, uh, that I think could be easily uh, uh, or facilitate the, the the transition from one tool to the other. Mm. Okay, um, there is a question within the chat uh, from Thomas that I would like to say thank you. Uh, are you using any tools or any templates to design uh, your measurement plan? Yes, I do. Uh, I I have my own that's been 
like updated from time to time and depending of the needs. But uh, it, now it, it starts to look better and more consistent to, through through the, the, the to, through my cost customers. Uh, I think it's, it's quite difficult to um, to have in one single template uh, the um, the for example the triggers. Uh, or the data variables, uh, the no, the yeah, the da data variable variables, together with the the code, because sometimes the code is could be could looks different, you know, uh, but in a, a, a but it's, it's my own um, Google Sheets or Google uh, or Excel uh, uh, sheet. So uh, yeah, but it's, it's starting to, to look uh, more consistently now. Okay, um, I have five minutes left. Can you maybe visualize or tell us about what will be your personal dreaming feature in Matomo? If, if you had like a magic wand with you and something that you would like to have or to be fixed within Matomo, in order for you, I mean, what would be this magical feature? Well, that is, I think, um, a way to personalize the, the, the um, like a kind of dashboard, but where you can, from the, from the dashboard, could navigate directly to, to the, for example, events, uh, um, or to uh, to um, personalize the menus, uh, say change the name of the menus uh, at your at your desire. Uh, for me, that will be something uh, interesting. The because you can you can sometimes there are some tools that you that you use the most and then some other tools that are not interesting for you i'm talking for for example for marketeers they have their own standing tools uh, along the the, the 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 platform and for people like uh, tumas or jorge that are using that are more in 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 the in the performance and the, the this other kind of uh, uh, debugging or developing uh, the tool, they probably use another tool. So I think that could be interesting to to just personalize uh, at least one part of the menus or have some personalized menu uh, tools. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we are three minutes um, ahead of the final time for this morning. I just uh, would like once more to ask to the audience, do you have any questions that you would like to ask to Alfonso? Uh, or Alfonso, do you have any questions that you wish the audience would have asked you today that we can maybe expose and then uh, answer it? Yeah, I think... It I think this part of the Google Ads and Matomo, uh, I I think there is, we need to um, to make the the marketers aware about how Matomo can deliver uh, information, the right information at the right moment, and the, because some of them, what I heard is that the Matomo is in incompatible with Google Ads. And uh, I heard uh, some, some, you know, wrong information that, it, it, that Matomo doesn't, that Google Ads doesn't retrieve information from Google, but everything can, can be achieved by right, correct implementations. And, um, and, uh, and that uh, we can, uh, use Google Ads and Google um, marketing tools together alongside with Matomo. That that's something that I think we need to 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 push more or talk more about um, because the end users are marketeers or or yeah you know people that needs needs to analyze the data. Uh, we. Probably in some moments we just fall into the this uh, 
nerdy way to to look at Matomo and 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 get the, into the into the um, uh, performance and and um, and um, you know uh, not only performance but uh, the way we analyze the data but the, the 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 compatibility with other tools and the way to export the data and the way to 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 um, to make a sign significant uh, inputs in the, in the data analytics it's important to to talk about to to spread the word about okay uh, i just have one tiny questions left so to me the advertising conversion premium feature of Matmo should be able to automatically recognizing the GCL ID and mapping it as a Google Ads uh, provider. Um, would you say that this plugin is currently not working as expected uh, in the specific use case that you're mentioning? Uh, no, the the GCL ID is, is, uh, is um, a, ha um, a hash that only been significant for Google platforms, uh, and it, it will deserve an integration, a further integration with Google to to get that information that it's being gathered. But the GCL ID contains the UTM tags, so if you are using the UTM, the UTM tags, uh, not the UTM, the UTM tags, along uh, with the GCL ID, you are delivering the information. Uh, to the ads uh, platform and gathering the information in the Matomo side. So um, yeah, uh, it's probably redundant, but uh, it's necessary uh, at this moment of the uh, to, for for Matomo. Okay, um, I will probably discuss it more uh, with you uh, in, in private messages to be sure that I got it correctly because uh, um, that's 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 a hot potato topic, and <laughs> yes. I wish uh, Matt Moore is able to help Google Ads users as best as possible. Oh. Okay. Mm. Um, so then if that's fine to you, I suggest that uh, we go for the lunch break right now and we will catch up with each other back at uh, 1 p.m. Once more, Alfonso, thank you very much for your contribution to the Matomo camp event today. Thank you, Ronan. Have a good one and hello and bye, everybody. <laughs>